Okay, perfect. There you go. Okay, so I got six pumps. All right, perfect. Okay. I can just imagine. What are the six pumps? AC power, DC power, CD, CD, CA? It's AC power, right? AC power. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. So take a look at how the pumps are arranged. You see this? Okay, so that's your AC power fuel pump. I can translate that over here. If I just look at them, see this? Cool. Okay. Real simple. Cross feed. It's right above it, right? What kind of power? Dang, Maggie for the win, right? Okay, cool. So I got my my DC power cross feed here. Okay. So I got AC power fuel pump. I got my DC cross feed. What I'm showing you right here is just simple, simple. It's just simplification. The panel hides a lot of the answers and a lot of little things, right? I'm going to show you another one here in a second with the wing body overheat light. This is pretty much the same on most Boeings, by the way. Most airplanes in general, they're AC power pumps. Um, yesterday, we talked about the wing body overheat light, right? So now we're going to get into the wing body overheat light. What does the wing body overheat light mean? It's over here. It's this amber light. Something's too hot, okay? It's a bleed leak, right? It's a bleed leak. Where is the bleed leak potentially? Okay. And I always tell everybody, you know what? The answer depends. If it's on the left side, it's five spots. And if it's on the right side, it's three. So really the answer to the examiner is it depends. And the moment you say it depends, they're going to realize, you know, because now I know there's either five or there's three, you know? So, okay. What are the five areas? Let's look at the five areas. And now I'm going to, so now as I'm delivering this, there is a continual scan happening always with the group. It's like, I'm here. They're still with me. I'm back over here. I'm, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the five areas. Okay, we have the air conditioning bay. We got the leading edge of the wing inboard of the engine. Scanning. All right, makes good. Yeah, makes sense. Nice, cool. We got the engine pylon over here. That's the third area. We have the keel beam that goes all the way back to the APU. And then we have the APU duct right here. So this would be one, two, three, four, five. That's on the left side. Cool. Wing body overheat means there's a bleed leak. On the left side, there's five. On the right side, there's three. But if the examiner asks, the answer is actually not going to be any of these. And you're just going to say, what does a wing body overheat light mean? There's a leak. Where is the follow-up question always? And then you're going to say, it depends. Okay. So Mark, if I'm an examiner, I am now asking for a volunteer. You see this? Okay, and, and, and I'm, I'm just calling a mark because you happen to be in my line of sight, right? But if there was a second mark on your side that wasn't paying attention, he, I got his attention quick now because I'm coming for his, for his tail next, okay? So anyway, so now with Mark, I'll say, hey, you know, let's say I'm the examiner. Hey, um, what does the wing body overheat light mean? There's a bleed leak. There's a bleed leak. Perfect, okay, leave it right that. You're in a deposition. You don't need to answer a whole lot here, okay? Perfect, all right. And then Maggie, um, the bleed leak is where? Dang, okay. Okay, it depends. Very nice. And now immediately I'm like, oh, okay. She knows what's up, right? Now it's either on the left side or the right side. Now the truth is I drew all this up here. Are you as a student going to draw all this up here also? Any student want to try? Okay. That's, I would, this, if this was a class for systems, I'd be doing this kind of thing, right? But no, we're not, okay, fine. We're well, not going to draw it. So you know what? I realize you're not probably going to draw it. The good news is on the oral, you have a panel in front of you because they're not going to ask questions on the panel if they don't have a panel, usually, right? So let me share with you now how we're going to take this image and we're going to transpose it to that panel over there. Real simple. Because if you can see that here, you're going to see it over here. And this is true for pretty much every airplane. We're talking about the pneumatic system right now. Yeah, this is my, oh, my wing body overheat light right here. Same image. It would look something like this. There's my, my engine right there. This is the wing leading edge. That's that ducting right there. This is the keel beam. It's in the shape of an L. How convenient. That's my APU bay. This is my engine pylon. And these three lights represent the air conditioning bay. Now, all of it, the, the isolation valve separates the two sides. That's the left manifold. This is the right manifold. Okay, so let me just draw that here. So this is my isolation valve. Okay. It depends. It depends. It depends. It depends. It's crazy. I never want to upset a video. I need to upset. It depends. <laughs> okay. Yeah, nice. Laminated panel. By the way, those of you uh, that 
you know, you have some say over what you can get in the training department, the laminated panels are great because you can draw on them and then you can just wipe the whole thing off. It's perfect. Yeah. So I just drink, I bring this over here and I say, Hey, look, this is like that. That's like that. This is this, this is that. That's it. So now when obviously, you know, when you're asked this question, you're going to be in front of the panel like this, likely in front of, in front of the examiner. So what I want you to do is see that image right there, but I don't want you to volunteer information. I just want you to answer the question that's asked. Okay. So if the wing body overheat light is what's asked, then we're just going to simply say it's a leak and leave it there. And then when they ask on which side, which I'm going to tell you it is on the left side because it has more, you don't need to say all of them. You just need to tell them it depends and they will immediately realize, you know what you're doing. At which point they're either they're a going to move on. They're just going to say, okay, they know next case. You could, that's true. Yeah. Do you? Okay. Okay. Yeah. It obviously it wipes right off. So yeah, that's good. Um, okay. Nice. Right. So now here's, here's what's interesting. Okay. Let's, let's take two different scenarios. Now you have one instructor that is going through pneumatics and the CBT comes up. Is it instructor guided CBT usually what you do or you, they do self-study CBT? Yeah. Self-study? Self after, after initial. After initial. Okay. So um, yeah, the experience, right? The experience that the student is going to have. If if it is... Everybody. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah. So one thing, you know, that's true for airlines in general. Okay. Uh, air, airlines usually, in my experience, they don't want to pay for training. Frankly, they don't want us as pilots. Like if they could get rid of us tomorrow, they'd be getting rid of us, right? Uh, and then and they and they don't and they don't really want to pay for training because it's a cost. And so it's a constant battle of uh, trying to have some some level of quality, and then compliance. And a lot of times, what ends up happening is their compliance gets um, prioritized first, and then the quality gets there second. So you know when when you have a some kind of regulation that says, oh, we need forty hours of of, of systems training. Okay, I'm going to do the 40 hours of systems training. How can I do that economically, right? Well, there's a, there's a program and it's called CBT and they can click through the whole thing. Perfect, sign me up for that, right? So now it, it complies, but it may not be the best tool, right? And a lot of these books also, by the way, are written by engineers for engineers with some lawyer input. So they're not, you know, you're, you're, you're tasked with chopping a tree with a butter knife. You understand what I'm saying? So it's not the best, it's not the best tool in the shed to get the job done. Um, <clears throat> so... What you then have to do as the instructor is become the chainsaw. And hopefully you have an opportunity to do that because you have some instructor led portion in your training that allows you to do that. And if you do recognize your position as being the chainsaw, because if they're working at home with a butter knife and they show up to you as another butter knife, it's not gonna be a good outcome in the end. you know. But the only way you're not gonna be a butter knife and you're actually gonna be the chainsaw is if you care about them period to begin with, which is why yesterday we started with values. Because if you don't value them and their result, there's no reason for me to be a chainsaw. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. So cool. So with this, there's the two scenarios I want to share with you, right? One is, hey, we're 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 in a, a system ground school. We're talking about pneumatics, and I'm the instructor that likes to be the butter knife, right? So I'm just like, okay, uh, roll it up here. Here's your wing body overheat. Here's uh, there's a couple more lights up there. It was in the CBT. Any questions on that? Nobody's going to have any question probably because they just want to cooperate and graduate, All right? Okay, no question. Move on, done. They go to the oral. They're asked that same question. They never saw that explanation. Are they going to articulate it that way? Probably not, right? Versus somebody who actually wants to do more than just be the butter knife. They actually go and they do all this explanation and they show them this whole thing, right? And now they're going to articulate it differently. So now I'm very careful when I find a student that needs remedial training. And I've had to give remedials before, right? But let me just hit on this for a second. You have somebody who needs a remedial session and we're gonna talk about it in the accountability piece. Do you need remedial training because you're not putting your part or do you need remedial training because we're not putting our part, right? Because let me tell you, if you need remedial training and, you're, and the remedial training you're going to do, the same quality instruction that you received there is the quality of instruction that you've been receiving before that got you to the point of remedial training. Doing another session and simply changing the title from full flight three to remedial training is not going to somehow make the training better. You're just getting more of the same that got you here in the first place. So at some point, the chain has to be broken there. 
And we, that what has to come up, if it's not the student, then it has to be the instructor. Now it could be the student for sure. I don't want to eliminate them. What I'm saying is before I ever turn to them to point a finger, I'm going to turn to myself first and say, was it me or was it them? Or was it a combination of both? So somebody who got this explanation over someone else who didn't would just get a totally different response, 100%. So does that make sense? Nice.